In this video, I'm going to demonstrate trimming, trimming a cup form called a unomi, which is a Japanese term used for an everyday type of cup with no handle. I have a couple of finished unomi here. This one's made by Adam Field, and this one's made by Forrest Lesh Middleton. They both made these at College of Marin doing demonstrations, and they're, they're both very nice, and they, they have a lot of similarities in form. We're mostly going to talk about how to trim the form to complete the cup. And so you can see here that both of the Unomi have much narrower feet than their openings. And there's been clay removed from this part here. I like to call this the under shoulder. In both cases, you can see a definitive point here where the trimmed area met the untrimmed area. Adams is about right there. And I have a couple of leather hard you know me that I threw yesterday. I'm going to trim one of these. So before I trim it, it's good to look at the difference. This was thrown directly on the wheel head and you can see that it's much wider than either of theirs. The cup in general is a little wider than theirs so I don't need to go as narrow. But I'm going to trim this inward and I'm really going to pay a lot of attention to the underside of the foot itself, the foot ring, and what I call the under shoulder. So those are the kind of three areas of form that I'm going to concentrate on. And so these will be good examples for me mentally to uh, look at and think about when I trim this you know me here. So I'm going to set these to the side and talk about how to get ready to trim. So let's put this over here. What you need to trim is some nice soft clay to hold your piece down on the wheel head and you need uh, at least one trimming tool. I suggest using a trimming tool like this if you have in your basic kit. This is generally referred to as the, the large trimming tool or the pear scraper, you'll hear people say. And I have a tool that I like to use a little bit sharper. It has the same basic uh, shape there. So I'm going to use that right there for to trim mine. And I'm going to take the <laughs> leather hard cup here and talk about what to do before you put it onto the wheel head. A big mistake is you want to trim and you just stick the thing on there and you don't actually have a good idea of how thick the bottom is or have any real sense of what form you have once it's upside down. So before you do any of that, hold in your hands and feel. So the first thing is to, to try to guess how thick the bottom is just by feeling with your fingertips. The more you do this, the better you'll get at it. So I can feel that there. And also feel here and feel where the thickness of clay is. I'm going to leave all of this untrimmed and I can trim from that point on which feels like where the extra clay is. There's a few other ways if you're having a hard time determining how thick the bottom is. That's really crucial to know how much you have there. One way is to use a couple of tools, some kind of straight stick and some kind of st other straight stick and go down and just hold it when it reaches the bottom and then pull it out and hold it right there and you can see how thick the middle of that is on the floor. So that's a good way to do it. If you're having trouble with that, you can just poke it. So by pushing the needle into the bottom until it reaches my inside finger and pulling it out, I can see that I do not have a lot of clay in the very middle of the floor. Now let me look back again at the shape. I have a cup or a bowl type shape at the bottom of this cup, which means I can trim a lot more in this area than I can in the middle. The middle is not very thick. So now I have a good plan. I know that I'm not going to trim too much there, but I can trim a lot more here and bring the foot in. So once I kind of have an idea of uh, my plan of action, I want to make sure that the clay is the right consistency. Actually, I actually probably should do this first. I mentioned it's leather hard. Soft leather hard is where I prefer to trim. So here's the test. Take a thumb, poke at it. It should not be sticky. If it's sticky, it's way too wet. But you should be able to make a dent with your thumb without resorting to your fingernail. If you have to scratch it with your fingernail to make a mark, it's actually too hard. You might be able to trim it, but it won't be fun. So I think this is perfect. Not sticky, but still soft enough to, to make a finger mark. Okay, I'm ready to go here. I'm going to turn it upside down. I prefer to trim on a kick wheel. 
much nicer than an electric wheel in my opinion. You don't need a lot of power and it's nice and smooth, but it can be done on either wheel. My wheel head has rings, which makes it nice and easy to center. At least get started. But I'm gonna put it intentionally a little bit off center so I can show you how to get it precisely in the middle of the wheel head. And you wanna use a needle tool for this. With my left hand, I'm gonna rest it right on top, what is now the top, which is the bottom of the cup. And with my right hand, I'm gonna hold the needle and rest it into my left hand and move towards the clay. And as soon as it contacts, I'm gonna stop pushing in and let it contact that on a few rotations. So you can see it's scratching the same scratch. Now I can gently pull everything away. I'm gonna take that scratch and face it right at me and push the entire cup towards the center of the wheel. And I'm trying to guess based on how far it moved away from the scratch. So now I'm gonna do the same thing, I'm gonna test it again. You need to pick a different spot or erase your scratch if you want to, but I just go a little bit lower. And now my scratch is much longer, it's much closer to center. So I'm gonna stop the wheel one more time. I have a real long scratch, that's my lower one. So that means I just need to push it just a tiny bit. You can hold this like a pencil is another way to do it. And I come over here and it should be pretty much a scratch all the way around. I picked another spot there. Another good thing to do at this point is hold it like a pencil and come up to the top and make a ring with your needle tool. Now I'm gonna stop the wheel. That ring should look like it's in the center. You shouldn't have a thin side and a fat side. If you threw it and it wasn't perfectly centered when you threw it, you might have trouble getting it totally centered. You need to get it as close as you can. Now that I have it in the middle of the wheel head, I'm gonna use some soft clay to hold it down. So I'm gonna take this soft clay and divide it into three pieces. And it's important to kind of roll those pieces into round or little logs. If it's really soft clay and you tear it like that, it'll really stick to your piece. So give it a little roll on your hands. And now I'm ready to use this to attach the cup to the wheel head. And this is really important. Take one hand, I use my left hand, and press downwards with a good amount of pressure. Then attach the clay right at the point where the lip meets the wheel head and push the clay down and inward a little bit. This hand here is keeping it from sliding off when you apply pressure. You do all this work to center it. If you just take some clay and push on it, you're just gonna push it right off center. So left hand there, attach some clay to hold it down. You, gotta, you need to use at least three pieces of clay. You can even use more. And, and don't use tiny little bits of clay because as you're trimming, especially as you're learning, they'll dry up and, and your piece might fly off because the clay dries up. So I have now have the cup upside down, stuck on the wheel head, it's centered and I give it a couple kicks to make sure everything still looks okay. And I'm, re I'm ready to start trimming now. So I mentioned I'm gonna use this trimming tool shape here, and I like to start with that with the flat side. And the first thing I'm gonna do is show you the correct position to hold the tool and the way I hold my hands. So left hand goes right back up there, gently resting as my anchor. I hold the tool at three o'clock three or maybe four, 3.30 or so, and I'm gonna press it into the clay just to clean it up. So I'm gonna get rid of those scratches, get rid of any irregularities. The wheel was not going very fast, as you might have noticed, and what the clay should look like when it comes off is like a ribbon. One side's usually rough and the other side's really smooth if your trimming tool's working well, and the clay itself on your piece tends to have a little bit of a rough texture. That's from the grit and the grog in there. That's normal. And so I just started by cleaning that up. Before I would trim anything out of here, I want to trim the, the width of the foot. So start by trimming the area on the outside. This is a foot that's narrower than the cup, so I want to trim this part first. Then I'll cut out clay for the foot ring. So let's just go right back to where I was, anchor hand here. And I know from before when I felt how much thickness I have that I have plenty of clay here. I'm not in danger of going through. I'm also thinking about the inside shape of the cup, which had a rounded shape at the bottom. So I can bring that in. 
and I like to keep it real sharp where it meets the rest of the cup. That's an aesthetic decision. Instead of rolling my tool and rounding that off, I like the, the definition that that provides. So I'm just taking my finger there and just seeing how that looks. It looks pretty good. And so I use the flat side of this tool for that. This tool has a narrow end and a big round end. Both come in handy. And so I'm going to take my finger and just erase that ring because it's, it's in my way. If your finger's not doing the job, you might try a wooden tool. That's good enough. Now I'm going to use the narrow side of this tool and I'm going to point it down. My left hand's the anchor there. And I'm going to cut a foot ring that's a little bit wider than I want the ring to be at the end. You can see that ribbon of clay coming off. That's a good thing. Pull that away. So there's a few ways you can do this. You can, you can work your way towards the middle like this. And I got to think about the thickness. I don't have a lot there. I can also turn the tool, working at three o'clock. Oh, I hit a little lump of something in the clay, that happens. And I'm trimming more into the corner. So I'm trying to match the shape of the inside in the opposite direction. So this is a mound, whereas the inside's a bowl. And you know, I have that little hole from the needle. I'm gonna take a little bit of the soft clay and just patch the hole. And I'm gonna give it one more move inside there to get it to, to how I like. And I did have a little bit of extra clay in the middle so I can trim that, but I don't wanna to do too much because I might go through the bottom. And sometimes the clay sticks in there. Try to get it out with your fingers. You might have to stop the wheel. So I have clay removed from the middle. I have this in the uh, form that I like. So now I need to finish the actual foot itself. And there's a lot of ways to shape the foot. But what I'm gonna do is to come over to the outside here and trim inward so that the foot is lifted more or less up and down for a little ways. And you can see there's a big groove created there. Or, and I'm gonna remove that because I want it to be a little more simple so I can bring that over to there. And I'm letting the edge of the tool create a real definition point where the foot meets the under shoulder. And then run around a few rotations there, and then I'll work my way back out to that outside edge. So it all matches up nicely. So the form is looking better. The foot ring itself, it does not look too good. And so I'm going to take the tool. And this is where you want to be real careful, because if you gouge in, you really mess up your foot. So I'm going to be real gentle. I'm going to hold the tool relatively flat so it doesn't catch. My left fingers are here as a place to hold up against. And I'm just going to kind of flatten the, um, the foot ring a little bit, for starters. So that's the point that actually meets the table. Now, with something where you didn't trim a lot off the middle like it is, it's a good idea to test it with something flat like that so that it's not hitting in the center. So I have just enough there to go through. So I don't want to trim that foot ring anymore. But I don't want to leave it like this either because it's really square on the outside edge of the foot ring, that's very likely to chip. And it, aesthetically, it doesn't look very nice either. So there's a couple ways you could uh, fix that. One is to bevel that edge, which is often what I like to do. So I'll use a straight tool and just hold it right there. My fingers are also there to help a little bit, and I'll just bevel that. And I can even do that on the inside to clean up that. I already kind of have a little one. It's good to clean your tools on the inside there and bevel that as well. So a be you know, uh, chamfered or beveled edges don't chip as much. Another way you could do it is to just use your fingertips or even a wooden tool and smooth it out and round the foot. So let's take a look here. Adam's field's foot is much rounder than mine. Mine was more beveled and uh, forests is a little bit different. It's got some ridges and things like that, but it's generally rounded as well. Neither of them have flat, sharp corners, so avoid those sharp corners. Um, the very last thing you might want to do on the foot is just gently press your fingers on there. What you don't want to do is get a damp sponge or any water on here. It'll make it totally gritty, especially with stoneware. It's just not a good idea. And so for a cup, 
I like to test the bottom by just gently pressing on it. It's a little bit dangerous though, if you're not used to that, you might just press through. I, I feel for a little bit of a give. I had all those guides, mental guides and visual guides from before. Some people do the tapping like a drum, but for me it doesn't work very well, especially on smaller pieces, bigger pieces might work better. And so at this stage, what I would do is uh, trust my instinct there and take the piece off the wheel and, and feel it and see how it looks. To take it off, I'll go to this soft clay and try to get under one side of it and pull it away from the cup so that it doesn't smear in. And, and here's a good trick. To take off two of them, if you're unsure about whether you're done or not, and, and make a little mark here and leave one of those attached. So I can take this off. Be a good idea, make a mark right where it's at. Take that off and I can feel it. And if I feel like I didn't do a good enough job, this will help me a lot. I can put that right back onto the wheel, put those other ones on, and it's basically in the same center position. So I've trimmed this you know me form. I'll clean my wheel head off so I can place it down and show you why we trim. There's a lot of reasons for trimming. It should improve the form if the form was made to be trimmed. You can see that there's a lot more shadow here. It feels like the, the cup is floating a little bit which takes away from that heavy feeling visually. So that's an improvement. It also should clean up the bottom and make it sit flatter on a flat surface. It doesn't chip as easily as a rough uh, corner or square corner. And then another reason, and you should think about this as you're shaping your feet, is a glaze separation point. So you can see Adam's porcelain cup here has a white foot ring and the glaze stopped right there because he designed in a glaze separation point. On mine, the glaze separation point would be right there at that edge. So kind of a similar approach. So all the more reason to trim a nice foot ring so you have a nice uh, place for the glaze to stop. There's a lot of other reasons to trim, but we'll leave it at that. Thank you.